say that. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand up and worship this morning. Glad to see y'all smiling faces. Those two loud women on the fourth pew while I'm talking. Y'all watch Greta. She'll get you in trouble. I'm just telling you. Ask John. John's already trying to get her back over there. Come on now. It's time to start church. Rain her in, John. Rain her in, son. It's a big day today. I don't know if you know it, but you might want to show up about 1045. We're going to baptize I'd say 10 to 15 people. The count's 15 if they all show up. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to worship and preach till then and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Just have a good time. I, I just really believe that, that church is the place to come to, to get help and to get what you need inside of you. you know, uh, it's, not a, it's not something we have to do, something we want to do because we know we're going to be refreshed. We know we're going to be lifted up. We know we're going to be encouraged. Uh, we know we're going to be pushed past our limits. And, uh, and all of that's going to work for the glory of God in our lives and in this community. So let's have a big time today. Let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And let's enjoy every minute of it. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you that today we're going to do everything you want us to do, God. We're, we're going to bless your name. We're going to worship you in spirit. We're going to worship you in truth. We're going to sing. We're going to preach, God. We're going to respond and we're going to do it all because of you, God. You're great. Lord, your goodness is uh, forever with us, and everything you give us is good, God. Mostly yourself, God. You've given us yourself. You've given us your spirit. You've given us relationship with you. So, God, let that be this morning exactly what we worship about, God, exactly what we lift our hands and voices about, that which we have inside of us, that which we have in you, God. We love you. We thank you for the great gift of salvation. For the great gift of the Holy Spirit, we ask you to let the Holy Spirit have his way in this place today. Do a work in us, Lord, that can't not, cannot be denied, Lord. Do a work in this church that only you'll get the glory for. Father, we, we give you free reign in this place. We give you our hearts and lives. We died to ourselves today just to serve you. Help us to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together. In the, blood, in the blood, in that soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are you garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in that soul-cleansing blood? of the land Are your garments spotless Are they white as snow oh, Are you washed in the blood of the land Well I'm so glad Jesus set me free I'm so glad 
Jesus set me free. I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Well, I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. Set me free, singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood. In the blood of the Lamb, the land, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in that soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Spotless are they white as snow oh, Are you washed in the blood of the land? Are you garment spotless are they white as snow oh, Are you washed in the blood of the land? Amen. Aren't you thankful for Jesus this morning? Glory to the God that we serve. Jesus, we love you. I get excited. I, Lord started kind of motioning me towards the book of Hebrews a couple, about a month ago probably. You know, when he starts warming your heart towards something. You know, I just, sometimes we, I think we get all this all confused and messed up. And we, we get, there's all these technical things that have to happen. And all these things that have to happen to make church run. And, life run and all this stuff and and we just forget about Jesus we forget about Jesus is the central theme the central character this is all about him this is about what he's done for us it's what he's doing for us and what what we can do for him and you know we just need to always center that's what worship is about worship's about it's not about the style of music it's not about this or that or what song we like it's about Jesus it's a, everything is always about Jesus and Hopefully over the next several months I'm going to be able to do the Word of God right by just proclaiming the, the greatness of Jesus, the supremacy of Jesus, the, the everything that He is and everything uh, that, that we need. He is that which we need. And, and this song just sings that. It tells about what He does and it just proclaims, Jesus, we love you. So during this time as we sing this together, just... Um, just hear the Lord and, and, and just, just tell him you love him. Just, just love on him today and, and give him the praise and the honor he deserves. Jesus, for what he went through and now for the place that he is at the right hand of the Father, he deserves all praise this morning. He deserves our everything. And I hope we can give it to him this morning. Oh, things have passed. I started it wrong. Yeah, that's bad. Oh, things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. The things that we thought Breathing in life again You cause your sun to shine on darkest nights And for all that you've done We will pour out our love this 
will be our anthem song. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the our weary head you make us strong instead you took these rags and you made us beautiful and for all that you've done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song Jesus we love you oh how we love you you are the one our hearts adore Jesus we love Our affection, our devotion Poured out on the feet of Jesus Our affection, our devotion Poured out on the feet of Jesus Our affection, our devotion Our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. Our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. Our affection, our devotion, poured out.
the door. You are the one. You are the one. I heart's the door. One more time. You are the one. I heart's the door. Don't you just love Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. Give him some praise. We love him because of what he's done for us. We love him because he first loved us. Because we've got to experience him because he loved us enough to die for us. And not even to just, you know, it was enough to just forgive you of your sin. But to think that then he would send you the Holy Spirit and lift you up out of your sin. Out of your mess, out of the muck, out of the mire, out of the whatever you want to call it. And and set your feet on a solid rock and establish your path and make the crooked way straight. And do things in your life. That nobody else has ever done for you. That's what he's done. He's actually through his resurrected, through his resurrection, he's resurrected you. Amen. He has he has brought you to life. He has given you new life and life more abundantly. So don't miss that. Don't walk around with your head down. Walk around with your head up, looking to the sky, knowing that he who started a good and work in you is going to finish it. And the one that's left you to go and prepare a place for you is going to come back and get you so the resurrection not only guarantees that he's going to change your life now but it also guarantees that where he is there you will be also praise him like you're already there this morning That once was crowned with thorns Is crowned with glory now The Savior knelt to wash our feet Now at His feet we bow The one who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty the radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see your name your name is victory all praise will rise to christ our king your name your name is victory all praise will rise to christ our king The fear that held us now gives way to him who is our peace. His final breath upon the cross, think about it, is now alive in me. Your name, your name is victory all praise will rise to christ our king your name your name is victory all praise will rise to christ our king Thank you. 
church. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of the tree. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Was borrowed for three days. Just three. His body there would not remain. Our God has robbed the grave. Our God has robbed the Jesus name we love you and we praise you for the sacrifice for everything that you've done for us for making our lives good for being a great father and for giving us everything we need for life and godliness let that flow into this room today God and let Jesus be made supreme in all of our hearts and lives may this church never waver may we always see you for who you are and what you've done for us thank you for lifting us up let us lift you up now in Jesus name we pray Amen. Shake hands with someone before you sit down. Glad you worshiped with us this morning in Missionary Girl. Have you ever felt that way? And if I had to tell you the truth, I'm afraid I'd have to say that after all I've done and failed to do, I feel like less than I was meant to be. And what if I could fix myself? Maybe then I could get free I could try to be somebody else Who's much better off than me But I need to remember this That it's when I'm at my weakest I can clearly see He made the lame walk and the dumb talk And he opened blinded eyes to see That the sun rises on his time Yeah, he knows how deep his destiny 
check, check. Let's, uh, let's get started here by praying over these young ones, blessing the Lord over them and giving, uh, give, giving the Lord a chance to work in their area. God, thank you in Jesus' name that these young ones are your creation, God, and they will soon be your children. God, I believe they will be saved and their lives will change and they will change the lives of everyone around them. God, I pray that you raise up a strong army, God, a army of, of young ones that even into their uh, elementary and junior high and high school days, God, that they will be a, a great force, that a great revival would come out of young hearts and young minds that, that hasn't been uh, uh, poisoned by the world or, or, uh, or been made pessimistic by life's uh, dealings, God. Let them be the ones who believe you say what you say can be done and what you've done can be done again, God. Uh, let them be uh, men and women of great faith. Let them trust your word. Let them trust the spirit that is inside of them, God. Your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all got a leader? Oh, there she is. What you got in that bag? Nothing. No. And no food in the bag? All right. Hebrews chapter 1. You better go, Ben. Oh, he's helping you run. I don't know if that's allowed, but I'm going to get a water. Y'all just hang out for a second. I have a feeling I'm going to need one this morning. And that uh, that you might need one too by the time it's over. I'm excited about the book of Hebrews. I, I'm a little nervous about it, um, to be honest with you, because I, I just want to do what God wants me to do with it. I want to always do justice to the word of God and uh, bring out what he would have us to see. Now, the book of Hebrews was, was written to those who were in a, a great time of suffering, a great time of persecution, and written to a people that might have been thinking about returning back to their old ways, back to Judaism, and it was so fresh upon their mind, the death of Jesus Christ, and, and Christianity was brand new. Um, it was written uh, before Jerusalem was re uh, destroyed in uh, 70 AD, so it was written at first century Christians, uh, some who had seen Christ, some who had believed in Christ, others who had seen the miracles and was in the middle of the miracles of the apostles. So, I mean, it was written to those who uh, were there to see some of what actually uh, Paul, I believe Paul was the writer of Hebrews. Now, we could have a huge discussion on that. Nobody really knows. They, they would say if you read commentaries, there's six or seven writers. But it, it, it talks about his brother Timothy in the book, which leads me to believe Paul wrote it. I'm a big fan of Paul, so I'm just going to say Paul wrote it for, you know, I'm just going to say that. If you want to say uh, Luke wrote it or somebody else wrote it, then we'll go with you when you're preaching, okay? So <laughs> we're going to go with Paul right now, and then next time you do it, we'll go with whoever you go with, all right? Nobody really knows. It's, it's, it's really the best guess. Uh, it's got some, some of everybody, it looks like, in it, and it could be multiple authors, but... Um, Judaism was, uh, yeah, that's the truth. The Holy Spirit wrote it. That's, that's the main thing. Uh, Judaism was the Jewish religion that everybody had been a part of and, and that God had created and, and that he had set down the laws and the Old Testament things and the sacrifices and, and done all of those things that we've read about uh, in, say, in uh, uh, Deuteronomy or Exodus or, or Leviticus, the, 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 the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible that you see that law being brought out and delivered to the children of God. Now, Hebrews is a very, and this is what makes me nervous, it's a very master. Uh, document. I'm not a masterful person. I have a master's in nothing but doing wrong things, all right? I have a master's in messing up and fixing it later, but Jesus is good and his mercy endures forever. So we're going to look at how they were evaluating. And I think some people like that, uh, like the Jews today, deal with the same thing. Is Jesus really who he says he is? Is he really the Savior of the world? Is he the, the greatest human being of all times? It, well, who is he? Is he just a good man or is he really a prophet? What, what is he? Who is he? Uh, I mean, even where is he? What, what did he do? How, how did he do it? And, and, and the theme of Hebrews is 
Jesus is greater. Uh, uh, the author is bringing his case to those who have dealt with the law and who are in love with Moses and who are in love with Abraham and Isaiah and Jeremiah and all the prophets and the forefathers, the patriarchs. And he, he's bringing to them saying, Jesus is greater. Uh, Jesus is better. Uh, Jesus is superior. He is the way. He is a greater way. In fact, he is the only way. And nothing or no thing and no one is greater than him. This is what he's doing. He's making a supreme case for Christ. And in the day that we live in, I think that all of us need to have the ability to make a supreme case for Christ to the people who are around us. I think it is not enough to just be saved. I know that will get you into heaven. But if in the day that we live in, if you really want to see souls be saved and lives be changed, then Hebrews kind of has to be the theme of our life because of all the false religions and foreign religions and all the things that's going on around us and everybody who's an atheist or an agnostic, those who believe in God but don't really believe in the God that we believe in, we have to be able to make this case also. So everything... And everyone is vying for our attention. But I'm here to tell you today, Jesus is greater. Everything around you wants your attention. And everything wants to draw you away. Everything wants to take you captive. Everybody wants to have your mind and have your heart. And everybody wants to tell you their way is right. But there is only one right way. And his name is Jesus. Chapter number 1, verses 1 through 4. Long ago. God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance. And through the son, he created the universe. The son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the right hand at the place of honor of the majestic God in heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, help us to preach your word today. God, I cannot do it without the help of your Holy Spirit, God. I don't have enough intellect nor capability, God, to make this what you'd have it to be today. Father, in fact, I don't have to. Make it anything, Father God, for you have already made it. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you breathed the word in the pens of men that it might be write, written down on pieces of paper, that you might preserve it for centuries to come, that we might in 2018 truly set our affection on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. God, we are so distracted the world is so distracted and disillusioned God and brought away turned by every wind of doctrine and believing anything God that's being brought their way God today let us make the case for Christ and let us all be more in love with him before we leave this place God let us truly let our love and our affection be set on the one the only one who can save us and change us give us life eternal fullness of the Holy Holy Spirit, abundant life, set us free, and let's truly be free. Let us fall in love with you, God. If there's one person in this room, God, that's not saved, let them be saved. But Lord, even in this room, if there's one that is saved, that is not passionately in love with the one who gave his life for them, God, let passion come from this place. Let fanatics come from this place, God. Let people, God, who truly want to know you and seek your your face Lord let them come from this room God let this text put something inside of us a, a longing inside of us let the love of our life be shown in this place today in Jesus name we pray amen now the writer is going to begin to make his case and as he is writing to the Jews he first has to clear up a, a little confusion. See, some Jews believed at this point that their ancestors, the, the Abrahams, the, the Moses, the, the prophets, uh, the Jeremiahs, the Isaiahs, the, the angels, uh, everything that had brought about the Old Testament. Because believe me this, there is a bunch of uh, a knowledge to these Jews. These Jews know a lot of things in their day and age. They have, have learned under scholars. They've learned in the right place. They've been in the temple 
temple. They've been doing sacrifices. They've been doing what God had called them to do. And learning this way. Listen to me. Which was. Don't ever forget this. Judaism was the way of God before Christ came. It was that which led to Christ. And what he would do. It was pointing to Christ. The law. The prophets. The the patriarchs. All of that. Had been bringing about a time. Where Christ would come. The New Testament. Hebrews is talking about the culmination. Of all that the Old Testament was. The Old Testament is not wrong. The Old Testament is right. Because in the Old Testament you see. Everything that God did. In order for Christ to come. So that you could be saved. And your life could be changed. Today those who are Jews by religion Those who are Judaizers Or those who believe in the Old Testament system They are lost They are not saved And people this is why Paul is writing this Not only writing to those who are saved Who are having trouble placing everything on Christ They are also writing to those who are not believing Or not going to that which God has done now There are still Jews today who are blinded Everybody comes to Christ and comes to heaven The same exact way Christian, Jew or anyone There is no one who will be saved by anything else Except for Christ so he's Pleading the case He's making sure they understand You were right Or you might have been going the right way Or that which you were learning Or reading or studying Or being taught It was pointing you in the right direction But now I have to proclaim to you The supremacy of Christ That their ancestors That the angels That everything everybody did in the Old Testament Was just to bring you to this place To see who Jesus is What he came to do And that he is greater than you could take every ancestor You could take every angel You could take every prophet You could combine them all and make one person And Jesus is greater than everybody and everyone And everything that you've ever seen That you've ever heard about That you've ever studied That you've ever read into And he begins first to speak about how God used to speak Verse number one Long ago God spoke many times In many ways to our ancestors Through the prophet And that's exactly what happened God had raised up prophets Who would say If you like the King James Thus saith the Lord I catch myself sometimes speaking in all English I I really feel like that's the way he would say it I heard it all my life You know you know, these prophets would stand up In the the place of God Here's God God speaks and God would speak directly To the prophets It wasn't like that Listen a lot of times today People are trying to figure out What God is saying to them In order to say it to somebody else But the prophets of the Old Testament Heard the voice of God just like you're hearing my voice this morning and they said this is what the Lord says and when they said this is what the Lord says it was exactly what God was saying you see it all throughout the Old Testament that's why you have the minor prophets that's why you have the major prophets this prophet to the northern kingdom this prophet to the southern kingdom this prophet to both kingdoms now this is what he's teaching them he's saying that was then That's how God spoke then That's what God did And that's how God revealed them That was the God of the Old Testament At some point he was agreeing with them That the way you used to see it Was the right way He was not downing the Old Testament prophets He was not downing the old system Or the old way He was actually saying some things about those. These guys You know, he, He wasn't throwing out the old system He was just making sure they understood That the old system was pointing uh, to the new one we went from the law to grace and God did speak through all these people God did work through all these people God did touch through all these people God made miraculous things happen through the hands of men but now verse number two this is how God is going to do it in the final days he has spoken to us through his son now no doubt y'all can't just turn me off I mean look I'm loud, but I got to hear myself just a little, or I don't think I'm on, okay? I'm sorry, guys. I was too loud. I get it, but if I don't, I'll strain my voice. Now, no doubt it's hard to go from what you have always believed to something different. Nobody heard what I just said, because all of you have done it. No doubt 
there, and amen, say amen after this, okay? Just, just priming you because you're not doing real good this morning, okay? Now, no doubt it's hard to go from what you've always believed to something different. Hey, I do that as a preacher. I mean, everybody's been through that. It's hard for anyone. Change is hard for anyone. Doesn't matter your age. Doesn't matter your background. It's got, it really has nothing to do with your religion. Change is hard for anybody. And maybe this morning, I, I just believe that somebody might be in that place this morning. I don't know if I really want to believe that this Jesus is who this writer says he is. I, you might be like the, the Jews of old who... I've believed, but I haven't believed like this. I, I, I've trusted, but I haven't trusted like this. I know what you're talking about, but I don't know that I see it as you see it. I'm not asking you this morning. Paul was not asking the Jews to see it as he saw it. You see, that's the difference in man-made religion and things that are from God. In man-made religion, people are asking you to see the things the way they see them. But in true, God-centered, focused, Jesus-glorifying, Bible-preaching churches, they're not asking you to see it the way they see it. They're asking you to see it the way God sees it. They're asking you to see it the way Christ sees it. They're asking you to understand this is the mind of God. This is the heart of God. This is who God is. This is what God says is going on. And Jesus is it because according to verse 2, God speaks and has spoken to us through His Son. Jesus is the final word. You don't need another word. Uh, you don't need another Savior. You don't need a, another revelation. You don't, you don't need anything. You just need Jesus. You need Him in His fullness. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit in your life you need the word of God set before you and you need to believe that Jesus is the only way the truth and the life and no man comes unto the father by him Jesus is it the only way to truly be a Christian listen to me I believe the only way to truly believe be saved is to only believe that Jesus is the only way I believe that people who believe there's other religions or other ways are lost the reason I believe that is because if the Bible is true, the Holy Spirit would never leave anyone that lead anyone that was saved to believe there is some other way. Holy Spirit does not cause confusion. The Holy Spirit does not go against himself. And even though it was talking about Satan, the house divided against itself cannot fall. Jesus spoke those words about Satan's kingdom as they were saying that he was casting devils out in the name of the devil. It's also true about what's going on in this place, in this time, in this passage, in this scripture. What Paul is trying to teach them that Jesus is the only way and every other religion is false. And nobody who is truly saved can believe any other way way this is final authority this is final say this is lying in the sand this is telling and this is a hard job for Paul because Paul is telling all his brothers this is his family this is his people this is his kinfolk. This is the ones who taught him and raised him and brought him along and did everything for him when he was a kid. And when he was an adult, they were grooming him to make him the best that there had ever been. And he is telling them, all of them, that in these days, the way you were doing it, it ain't the way anymore. This is the way. This is the final say. Doesn't have nothing has any more say. There's no need for priests. There's no need for sacrifice. There's no need for any kind of uh, religious activity to get you to the place you need to go why everybody else probably in this day and age and even in ours today I see this they're looking for dreams and visions and old leaders and old things and prophesying and words and mystical signs and wonders and all of that and they're missing ultimately that which will carry them to the next level that they really want to go because it's been revealed to the person of Jesus Christ he is not listen to me he is not a one time deal where you just get him and you go on through Jesus Christ all things are revealed so that's why Jesus is supreme that's why Jesus is living in you his spirit is living in you you have the mind of Christ you were born that way you were born again and Jesus has been on the earth Jesus is now ascended into heaven Jesus knows everything about everyone all things are given to him everything is under his feet and God has said these things he said Jesus is the only way Jesus is the only salvation there are no more saviors there are nothing 
anything. Nothing. There's no one else. There's nothing. Like, and he's talking to a bunch of religious people. They are good people. That's the thing that scares me the most is that religious people, we always talk about the sinner. We always talk about how the sinner's got it wrong and the, and the sinner's ruining the world and the, and the sinner's causing us issues. My issue is that if light always dispels darkness, then the church doesn't have Jesus in the right place because if Jesus is greater than everything, if we were truly seeing that, living that, saying that, believing that, then that which we have in us would be greater than that which is outside of us. To this supremacy of Christ. It has to grow. It has to be an understanding. It has to be a mindset. It cannot be just a salvific thing. It has to be everything. All thanks to you. And it doesn't matter what you put. After the greater sign. Jesus is always greater. It doesn't matter. You know. I, I, I've been thinking this all the time. If people. Were as worried about God's word. As they were about their words, then their words would be God's word. Jesus. Look, we're all worried about our opinions. We're all worried about what I think, what I want to do, where I want to go, what I want my life to be, what I, 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 I. No, not in the kingdom of God. I get to decrease. John, so who can increase? Who was he talking about? Jesus, the supreme one who was walking through the desert, who showed up at the pond that John was baptizing at. And Jesus looks at John and John says, whoa, 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 I can't baptize you. And Jesus said, yeah, you're going to. He said, I'm not even worthy. I'm not even worthy to, to unlatch your shoes. He, he said, I've got to decrease myself. I've got to get out of the way so Jesus can be the way. Paul is writing to these people who thought they had it figured out, who thought everything was good and thought everything was right. And he's telling them, you ain't got it figured out. It ain't all good. It ain't all right unless Jesus is in the place that he needs to be. Verse 2, and now all these final days he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything. Everything to the Son as an inheritance. And through the Son, God created the universe. Everything is His. Everything is made by Him. Everything is sustained by Him. Everything is brought together by Him. Everything is held together by Him. He is that which is that which holds all things together. There is nothing that was made that wasn't made by Him. And not only did He make all things and do all things, He is all things. But then He receives all things at the end. Everything is given to him as the inheritance. God said, I used him to create it. His supremacy, his greatness is seen in his abilities. Look at what Christ can do. There is nobody you have ever met or have ever read about that can do what Christ has done. You should be enamored with Jesus the Christ. You should be head over heels for him. He should spark your interest and spark your heart and spark your mind and spark your worship more than anything or anybody that's on the face of this earth. More than your wife and your kids and your religious system and your job and your pocketbook and everything else that you've ever thought was the greatest thing that ever walked the face of the earth. No, Jesus is and he proves it by John chapter 1 in the beginning. The word already existed. Jesus didn't show up on the scene one day and decide that he was going to create everything there was no beginning to God our little minds my little mind came I know with the head this big you'd think I'd have a bigger mind I get it it even looks even better with no hair on it did you see where I forgot that sunscreen I'll just go ahead and point that out for somebody else does you know my little mind couldn't even remember that there was a hole in the back of that hat I thought I've covered my head not that part you didn't Jesus wasn't even born Jesus became a man to show us the image of the invisible God. <laughs> but he wasn't born. He's always been. Do you understand that the thing that you're serving is infinite? The thing, the person, the being that you are believing in has always been and always will be. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. This is Jesus Himself. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created. He was, look, He was existent 
in the beginning, not created, already there, transcends time, eternity past to eternity future. There's no beginning. He's the Alpha and the Omega. There's a beginning and end us. There's no beginning to God. There's no end to Him. This is the Jesus that Paul's trying to bring the case for. He's saying God created everything through Him. God was there on His throne and Jesus was speaking the world into existence by the words of His mouth. He gave life to everything. He gave life to every human being. He gave life to every animal. He gave life to every element, every atom, everything that breathes the leaves and the water, everything that there is. God created with His Son through His mouth and His life. Jesus brought light to everyone. And that light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. It doesn't matter. That's a part of the supremacy of Christ is that there's no beginning and there's no end and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Nobody can put out this fire that is in my Savior. Colossians chapter number 1. Christ, this is verse number 15. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all of creation. For through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers. This is Paul writing. Do you understand this writing? He's saying everything that you look up to, the one that you should look up to made them. The kings, the rulers, the presidents. Now that's why I get so sick of people campaigning for other people. Campaign for Jesus for a little bit, all right? Because he is greater. He puts these people into their places. He sets all rulers in their places. Everybody in the high places of authority. Christ has made them the authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him. And everything was created for him. He existed before anything else. And he holds all the creation together. He is the head of the church, which is his body. Think about that for a minute. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him God reconciled everything to himself. Verse 20, he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Christ makes everything right. Christ makes everyone right. God became flesh and dwelt among us. And God, listen to me. This is how you know Christ is the supreme being in all of creation. It pleased God to dwell in Christ. It pleased God. It pleased God to say, I will go in the form of my son to earth. You think about that for a minute. There was nobody else that would have pleased God. In fact, we all have fell away from God. No, not one. We all, we're all sinners by birth, alienated from Christ by our action. But it pleased God to dwell in Christ. There's, and, and when we elevate her, or when we pick another religion, or when we, when we put something above Christ, that's the only thing. Listen, in Christ, loving Christ, serving Christ, there's nothing that pleases God like that. God is pleased in His Son. And we have to understand that verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 1 says this. And through Jesus we see the glory of God. We see the character of God. You can see how God does things. You say, I just don't know about God. You don't read the Bible. Because in Christ you see God. Say, you know, God's all. God's just a God of wrath. No, He's not. He has that side to him. But when Jesus looked across the hillside at those people. And he saw them as sheep having a shepherd. Not having a shepherd. You see the compassion that Christ had. Where did he get that from? It pleased God to dwell in Christ. God, My God's compassionate too. So I see the glory and I see the character. You see God. Jesus is not God as far as the person. There's God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit but Jesus is God in deity
unity. Don't get that confused. Uh, this is not a, a thing called modalism where we believe that God is just one being and Jesus is in him and the Holy Spirit is in him. That is not truth. The scripture teaches that when God was on his throne, Jesus was speaking everything into existence and the Holy Spirit was on the face of the deep circulating above the waters. It's very proven that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are separate beings, but God is pleased to dwell in Christ. He sustains everything. Do you understand that this world, the glory of God is seen in a world that's spinning? A world that's spinning, and you say, this world, I hear this, this world is spinning out of control. It is not. Absolutely it is not. It is going exactly the way God planned it to go. From, from the beginning, he had an expected end. And everything that he wants to happen will happen. And everything you read in that Bible will come to truth and will happen on his timeline. The world's not spinning out of control. Jesus is holding everything perfectly where it's supposed to be. Sustaining, creating, speaking, working on your behalf. Not, oh, look, look, was it not enough? Was it not enough that he would die for you? Was it not enough that he would hang on a cross for you? Was it not enough that he keeps on going and everything continues to move by him? Remember, the Jews are thinking it moved by this one. They believe in God. The Jews believe in God, but they didn't see. Their minds weren't open. Their eyes couldn't see that everything they believed about God was pointing towards Jesus. And now Jesus had come and they were looking the opposite direction they needed to now look at the moon and the stars and the mountains and the seas to see Jesus was doing all of this that he made the world go around if it wasn't evidence there's one more sentence to prove that when he had cleansed us this is Hebrews chapter number one when he had cleansed us from our sins he sat down when you sit down work's done amen you don't sit down till the work's done but when the work's done, you sit down and you go, the work's done. Think about this. He sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the, maj I love that, the majestic God in heaven. Who else gets the right hand? Say, I don't know about this Jesus guy. You don't have to. He's sitting at the right hand of God. Listen to me, if the Holy Spirit's telling you to believe in Him with all your heart and serve Him with all your life, you do that because of who He has already proven to be. That what the Word of God says is true. There's only one right hand. There's only one place of prestige. There's only one place of power. There's only one that can sit at the right hand of God. That means He's the man. I'm God. This is Christ the man. This is the one the one who sits here has rule over everything. Everything is it. So he sat down at the right hand of the majestic God. We've talked about a lot of reasons that Jesus is great today. But who else would do that? Who else would go to the lengths he went to? Who else would stand on the nothing and make everything? Who else would make sure everything goes right through all of the Old Testament that Jesus could be here? Who else would go to a cross willingly? Who else? else would die in your place who else would go knowing he is God who oh, listen look we couldn't even get a president or anybody else in a high position to stoop below the place that they're at in order to endure a little pain and suffering but Jesus being God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but took upon himself the form of his servant and had no reputation and then found in the place of God he humbled himself and he died a death on a cross that was worse than any anybody there is nobody who ever went through the pain and the suffering and the agony that Jesus went through and Jesus got on that cross willingly he said my life is gone he took his own life out of his body he went into the grave and he was resurrected and for the joy that was said before him the joy the joy of knowing that one day you would finally get it the joy of knowing one day that the supremacy of Christ would be so much that you couldn't stand it anymore and you finally had to quit living for yourself and doing what you wanted to do and you had to grab hold of the one who made everything for you and say yes I believe in this Jesus this Jesus I look look not my kids Jesus but the Jesus of the universe the 
the big Jesus. Not the one that just gets me to heaven, but the one that makes the world go round. The one who's given me everything and holds everything together. The one who's made me who I am today. And he did it. Nobody else did it. This is the most powerful man in the kingdom. This is the most powerful being that's ever walked the face of the earth. And the position that he is seated in proves that today. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. In fact, right now he's praying for you. Some of you just to say, Lord, please help them get this today. Please, Lord. Please, God, let them see the glory of God that dwells in me. And let it forever change them and change the community that they live in. See, the Bible and history has already proved that Jesus is supreme. Now, the only question is, do you believe it? Every head bowed and every eye closed. That's what faith is. Faith in Christ is what you have to have. I can't have it for you. I can't. If you've had trouble believing in Christ, look, this belief goes, you're saved. It goes far beyond just being saved. If you had trouble believing Christ for this, believing Christ for that, trusting who he is, trusting what he says, believing that he can take care of the situation you're in and the circumstances. Look, if he can hold the world into existence and speak it through the mouth that he has, if he can spin it and keep it doing perfectly, if he can do the things that makes everything in life good, all good things come from our Father. Listen to me. If he can do all these things, can he help you this morning? Can he work in you this morning? Can he... Can't Jesus, look, look, whatever you've put before him before today, it's got to go away. Jesus has got to be your first thing. Set your affections on things above. Preeminence, first place. That no more the old life. No more the old ways. No more the old loves or the old bents. Behold, all things become new in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Jesus is better. I want to say this. Jesus is better than what you're giving him. If what, look, if how much you put out for Christ is that which he is actually worth, what would he look like right now? That which you give him, that which you love him with, that what you go towards him with, that is indicative of what you believe about him. And how big you think he really is, and how good you really think he is, and how great, and how much you love him. That, look, you can test your heart, you can see your mind in your actions, you can say, oh, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. But that what you do, that's what you believe, that what you are, is indicative of where you really put Christ. Christ is supreme. Christ is above all. He's in all. He's around all. He's below all. He is all. He is our life. That's why life is more abundant when you come to Christ because you actually get life. Because He is life. He's spoken into existence. So I'm going to pray just a few minutes of invitation. Two things. If you're not saved, you have to give Christ your life. Supreme being. He is wants your heart and your life and he wants you to serve him he will forgive you of your sins he will cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness he will give you his righteousness he will give you his holy spirit and it will change you forever you don't have the ability to believe like i'm talking about this say this number two is this if you are saved but you've been liking something else. You've been liking somebody else. You've been living for something else or somebody else. You've been putting something before Christ. You just want to love on Him this morning. The altar is open for that. I'm going to pray just a few minutes of altar call. Then we'll go, Father, in Jesus' name. Let Christ be made supreme in this place. Let who He is, what He is, and what He can do be made known to every mind that's in this room. May every heart be filled with Him. May every mind be filled with Him. May we see who He really is, God. May we experience who He really is, Father. And may it change us forever. 
Let us leave here loving him more than we love anything on this earth, especially ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You just pray for a few minutes. You want us to pray with you? We're here. If you need anything this morning, you come. Love on him. Give him that which he deserves. Let him be supreme in your life. Let your life be changed by the glory of God. Father, in Jesus' name, may we lift you high. May we glorify your holy name. May we magnify you in all the earth. May you be the one who our lips praise. May all things revolve around you. May our lives and everything that we have, God, be centered and focused on you. Jesus reigns supreme in us. And in this place, God, never let this church get our eyes off the prize. God, never let us focus on anything but you. Jesus, you are the one. You are the only one who could have done what has been done. We give you all honor and glory for all things. All things in the earth, above the earth, below the earth. We give you glory and honor in all things. Praise you for who you are. Your good and your mercy endures forever. We love you. We love you. God, help us love you more. Help us just to pour out ourselves as offerings to you. God, help us just to realize all of these things that the scriptures say, God. Press it on our hearts, God. Let our life be changed by a closer relationship and walk with you. Thank you for what you've done in this room this morning. God, I pray for this offering. I pray for the gift and the giver. God, thank you for a generous people and the gift that they've given over the several months. God, for all that's going on around this place, God, we love you. God, we can't give you enough praise, Jesus. You are the cause of all these things. God, let us lift your name high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Good morning and welcome to Missionary Grove Baptist Church. We are so excited that you chose to worship with us today. If this is your first time with us, please fill out the tear out portion of your bulletin and turn it into the Welcome Center in the back where we would love to meet you and give you a free gift. Is the Lord leading you to become a member of Missionary Grove Baptist Church? Join our new members class held on the first Sunday of every month. Our baptism service will be held today at 10.45 a.m. If you missed it but are interested in being baptized, the next service will be Sunday, September 9th. This week's Operation Christmas Child item to bring in is jump ropes. In October, we have a team of missionaries from Missionary Grove traveling to Honduras. The total cost is around $13,000. If you would like to make a donation towards this trip, Grab an envelope on the back bulletin, fill it out, and drop it in the offering plate, and please continue to keep our team in your prayers. Our next business meeting will be September 12th at 7.30 p.m. We encourage all members to join. Our Men's Pursuit Outdoors Ministry will be having their next event on Thursday, August 23rd at 6 p.m. World Goose Calling Champ, Mr. Kelly Powers, will be the guest speaker at this event. Mark your calendars. On October 6th at 4 p.m., we'll be holding our 6th Annual Faith, Family, and Fishing at Camden Central High School. This is our biggest event and our most favorite of the year. We need a lot of volunteers to make this night a success. Please see the sign-up sheet on the back bulletin. Thank you again for choosing to worship with us today at Missionary Grove. And remember to share hope through the love of Jesus. Amen. Stand up and be dismissed in a word of prayer. I pray that Jesus will reveal himself to you in great ways this week. That you will continue to love him with all of your heart. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Thank you for the goodness of Christ and all that you've done for us, God. We worship you. We serve you. We love you. We will promote you to the world, to the ends of the world, because you are the Savior of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.